Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ms. Santana Masikir from the English Postgraduate Students of the University of Sumatra Utara. And today, I'm going to introduce and explain to all of you about a branch of stylistics again, which is feminist stylistics, and how to do the analysis on feminist stylistics. So, let's begin. So, about feminist stylistics. The term feminist stylistics should be properly credited to Mills, 1995, because Although she was not the first stylistician to implement a feminist stylistic perspective, she was nonetheless the one who coined the term and described more fully practices of this sub-branch. So Sarah Mills had previously used a slightly different version of the label, so namely Marxist feminist stylistics, but because the overt extra ideological load, the term did not discuss again. So, feminist stylistics can be defined as a sub-discipline in the field of applied linguistics as well, which demonstrate how language, ideologies, and dominance are interconnected in literary works. So, it provides an avenue for exploring and exposing the realities of social injustice against women in patriarchal societies and it works of art. So, as a result of this, the literary scene has in recent times witnessed an incredible influx of female writers globally. So, it challenges the conventional distortion of women and interpretation of the text and construct multiple meanings and brings out diversity in textual analysis. So according to Mills, 1995, feminist stylistic demonstrates how language ideologies and dominance are interconnected. So it proposes a framework for text to be analyzed from three levels. The first is word, and then syntax, and then discourse analysis. So they are explained as follows, as you can see on the slide. The first is word level analysis. It focuses on gender bias that can be seen in the use of individual words or lexical items. Okay, this consists of three parts as well, three elements. The first is generic pronoun, and then generic nouns, and then the naming and endocentrism. And then the second is syntax level. It is a common contemporary linguistic belief that words should be analyzed in relation to their context. Okay, this also contains of uh, three, no, not three, four elements. The first is ready-made phrases, and then metaphors. The next is jokes and humor, and the last is transitivity choices. So that is the analysis from syntax level. And then the third, last but not least, discourse level analysis. So, it proves that overly gendered, this suggests that there are actually patterns and structures in discourse, okay, which present gender. This consists of three elements, the first is characterization, and then the second is fragmentation, and the last is vocalization. Okay? So, these are the elements to analyze and what a feminist stylistics concerns with. Okay. So the first element in feminist stylistic is word level analysis. As I said before, it consists of three elements, sub-elements as well. The first is generic pronoun. It is the element in language perpetuate the view of male as a norm or a universal and female as a deviant or something. The second is generic nouns. It is a situation where a term is recognized closely to a gender. And then the last is naming and endocentrism. Well, in feminist perspective, there is a language sexism, particularly because they represent or name something. The world from masculine viewpoints or feminine or something. 
The second level in feminist stylistic is syntax level analysis. It consists of four. The first is ready-made phrases. So there are phrases which are reconstructed and sexism in meanings. So the second is metaphors. As you know, metaphors is a kind of figure of speech. And then jokes or humor. Okay, reader are actually may unwittingly participate in the perpetuation of sexism in text. The last is transitivity choices. There is a range of choices which are offered and this revolves around three sets of choice. Material, mental, and relational. So that is from the point of view of syntax level analysis. Last but not least in feminist stylistic element is the discourse level analysis. As I said before, it consists of three as well. The first is characterization. It is the analysis of the way stereotypical notions often inform the language choices. The second is fragmentation. It is a process whereby characters in texts described in terms of their body parts. Okay. And then the third is focalization. It is the process whereby the events in a story related to the reader from the consciousness of the character or narrator. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm inviting you to do the feminist stylistic analysis, which happens to be finished. I have done one analysis and I'm going to share it to all of you. So ladies and gentlemen, the title of the analysis which I've done recently is Feminist Stylistic Analysis on William Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice and Taming of the Shrew. So, this study attempts to figure out and examine the elements of feminist stylistics or feminism within two world's most famous play and short stories. The first is The Merchant of Venice and Taming of the Shrew. So this study uses descriptive qualitative design, of course, while the analysis adopts the feminist stylistic theory from introduced by Mills, 1995 and 2005, to identify and explore the elements of feminism and sexism within both of the playwrights and short stories. So to see more, let's see. So, the introduction starts from feminism. As you know, that feminism is a notion to awaken the low position of women in society, to bring them up, okay? And then to study feminism in a literary text means to study the ways in which meaning serves to sustain relations of domination. So, that's how I depart from the, the analysis of the background. And then, the literature review certainly focuses on language and gender, and then the feminist stylistics itself, and style and feminist, and also if you want to make it, you know, as the data is from a playwright, you should introduce the playwright, as I do, and then if you get it, the data from the poem, you should introduce the poem. Okay, so that's the literature view all about. Ladies and gentlemen, as introduced before, the methodology, of course, used a descriptive qualitative design. Okay, I used the theory from Ari Jacob and Sorensen, 2010. Okay, qualitative seek to understand the phenomenon rather than numerical data. And then uh, the the study adopts the theory from Mills, which in order to examine and figure out the feminisms in both of the playwrights later. So, ladies and gentlemen, we come into the result of our analysis. So, after I, I identified and analyse, analyzed the uh, both of the playwright, okay, I found that the first from the word level analysis. The first is generic pronouns and nouns. There are three. The first
Lazarus is Portia, and then Larissa, then Catherine. Three of them, all of them, is considered as she and her in the gendered pronouns. So it's also a female. And then in the naming and endocentrism, I found only one, which is in Taming of the Shrew. There is a, a, a naming called the Shrew for Catherine, which is, you know, because, because of her, her ungovernable temper and vow tongue. So that is why people, and Shakespeare especially, name her the Shrew. So that's found from the naming, only one. The next analysis from the syntax of syntactic level analysis, it is found the ready-made phrases. There is from Taming of the Shrew, there is a phrase found that your beauty, your gentleness and your virtues are phrased in every time. This is an utterance said by Petruccio to Catherine. So, ready-made phrases of feminism are beauty, gentleness, and virtue. It is the features that go along with women. So, that is the, it is a kind of sexiness, sexism terms in Taming of the Shrew. The next, from syntactic level analysis, is metaphor. There are two metaphors found. One, from The Merchant of Venice, which many fools are hidden behind a silver covering. Well, it was a statement that lied within a silver box found by Prince Aragon. Well, it is the, the metaphor considered a sexist expression because the ones who mostly wearing royal title and suits are men. So many men are fools actually behind their silver covering, their silver suits, armor or something. The second metaphor is my falcon now is sharp and passing empty from Taming of the Shrew. So it is an utterance said by Pertusio who compared his treatment of Kate to the practice of all falconry, you know, training wild falcons for hunting. So th this can be sexism by Shakespeare because this statement we know that Catherine wants the shrew being dominated by her husband to tame her. So women being dominated by male. Okay. As for the discourse level analysis, I found only one, which is the characterization. The first is from the Merchant of Venice, which is Antonio, is the Merchant of Venice itself, and then Bassanio, Antonio's dearest friend, Portia, a rich lady in love with Bassanio in Shylock, a Jewish moneylender. In my paper, I explained them from what they have said, so in case in this to make short, so I just put them into the characters. Okay, and then from Taming of the Shrew, there is Baptista, a rich gentleman from Padua, and the father of Catherine as well. As well. Second is Catherine, the, the Shrew itself, and Baptista's daughter. And then the last is Petruccio, a wealthy gentleman from Verona who is looking for a wife. So those are the main characters. There are also supporting characters, but there is no uh, scene or conversation from them. So, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, okay, feministic values are highly prominent in both of these playwrights, The Merchant of Venice and Taming of the Shrew, especially including the radical feminist concept of patriarchal society. So, Shakespeare's positioning of women as powerful, free characters in his plays has been, well, perhaps the most controversial example of threatening and empowering women to date. So that's what I found from the both of the playwrights. So, ladies and gentlemen, for further research to quench your thirst in uh, feminist stylistics, I attached a further reading okay, for you to understand more about feminist stylistic. You can, well, I can say one about Mills, 2005. It is the newest version about feminist stylistics, the interface series from Rod 
Netflix publisher and to support the feminist stylistic I attached also Simpson 2004 about the stylistic a resource book for students Routledge publisher as well so ladies and gentlemen it seems to be the end of our meeting and my explanation for today about feminist stylistics and how to do the analysis so thank you very much for your very kind attention see you again and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh